toilet paper. Pallets! Okay? There, there was a fight down in the south over toilet paper. A lady just around this area had someone steal it out of her trunk as she was loading groceries. You know, you go in the store, they're out of toilet paper, they're out of hand sanitizer, even out of rice and beans. People are petrified.
trust the situation. He trusted God. Now, anybody trusts God when things are good. Things are good, I know all kinds of people tell me they love God. If things are bad, it's amazing how fast we flee. But the reality is that that's exactly what he did. He continued. Notice that word. He did what he always did. No matter what the issue was, no matter when it came, he always looked to find. He put himself in his hands. He trusted him. So I'm going to look at God. Well, when you look at God, you're going to find comfort. But the truth is, the only comfort in life is the comfort of God. If we don't have the comfort of God, you've got nothing. If you don't believe in God, then how do you deal with this fight? You get freaked out. How do you deal with when people betray you and hurt you? You get angry. How do you deal when things in your life fall apart? I was listening to, to Charles Stanley actually preaching on the same subject here a while back. And I love what he said because he was talking about uh, the fact that there are so many preachers out there today that tell you God only wants to bless you. God only wants things to be good in your life. He wants you to be rich and wealthy and happy and all this stuff. And God only has good things for you. And he says, you know, that sounds really good until the bottom falls out of your life and you didn't have any cause for it. You didn't do anything for it. And when the bottom falls out, where is this God who only wants to bless you and be good to you? The reality is, is we understand that God is there in some God is there when we struggle. God is there in no matter what situation we face ourselves in. That's what we come for ourselves with. Again, for the loser, I got a number of books for him tonight. Be glad, O Christian, and whoever you may be who recognize yourself as a work of the Lord. We see ourselves in relationship to God. The truth of the psalm is told you, and told you is great comfort. If you only believe that Christ had been constituted Lord over all, if you only believe Christ is truly God over all things. For if your enemies plot evil against you from afar, against whom are they ultimately plotting? Are they plotting against you or Christ, if you're Christ? And someone tries to hurt you, it's Christ they're attacking. For they belong to him as well as you do. In other words, all people are subject to him, whether Christian or not. Fear not. He is present there and here. He sees what they are taking against you and watching over you with greater care. Think about that. God is watching over you with greater care than you are watching over yourself. Than you're protecting yourself. God is watching over you with greater care. It's a world around the belief, which because of its godliness cannot appreciate this comfort and great security. For we do not lack a protector and owner. We just lack faith that believes in about why did Paul say if Christ is for me who can be against me? Why would Paul say that? I mean, it's because he remembers who Christ is. Jesus is more than just a Savior who died on the cross for you. He's that too. But he is not just a Redeemer who purchased you from sin and gives you eternal life. He's not just the one who guides me with his love and his word. But rather, Christ is, we need to understand that Christ is the most high God. He is God himself. He's the all-powerful king of creation. He controls everything in the world. He reigns over all things. And everything, everything in your life, in my life, and every one of our lives, Ultimately, it happens for his glory. That's exactly what the Bible says. For by him all things were created in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. Everything was created for Jesus. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Literally, when our lives are in Christ, that's when things hold together. When they're not, that's when things fall apart. Because all things are held together through Christ. The, the truth is, is that the biggest reason we don't find comfort in God is because we often really don't believe in God's enough. We really don't believe God is enough. 
When we hit that valley in your life, when we're dealing with problems, again, whether it's fear of the virus, or whether it's someone did something to you, or it's worried about finances, the future, or whatever else it is, when you're in that spot where life is really coming down on you, do you believe that God is strong enough, powerful enough, and loving enough to lift you up? Do you believe that God is big enough and strong enough to help you walk through it? Do you really believe that God is powerful enough to protect us in it? And do we believe that God is loving enough not to let us handle more than we can do? If we believe these things, it changes our whole perspective on our situations in our lives. No, I don't have to find it. But when we begin to grasp just how big God is, how powerful, how much He is in control, how He's able to take things that happen in our lives, all things, and work them to good, we begin to understand that God can take everything in all of our lives and work it to good. Then we can say, like David did in Psalm 62, one thing God has spoken, and two things I have heard, power belongs to you, God, and with you, God, reward everyone according to what they've done. You know what that says? It says no matter what your situation, no matter what my situation is, God is powerful enough to take care of it. And He's loving enough to want to. He's powerful enough, cool enough to take care of any situation you find yourself in. And not only that, He's loving enough to want to. That's why we turn to Him and not anything else. Second one. We are comforted by God when we realize that our suffering is blessed by God and considered holy. Literally, God considers our suffering holy. And He does that because He understands our suffering. I mean, it's so important that we understand that because the reality is most of us say that, but we don't mean it. Okay? You know, someone tells you that you're, they're having problems and you look at them and say, oh, God understands. You know, that's kind of like saying, have a good day. Thank you. 
understand yeah, our, our suffering. He hates it because God didn't create suffering. We need to understand that when God created the world, it was perfect. There was no suffering. Suffering came from sin in the world. Okay? We suffer because of sin. Not necessarily specific sin, but because of sin. This world's decaying because of sin. We get sicknesses because of sin. And people treat us dirty because of sin. We deal with crises because of sin. Okay? Not necessarily sin. I've done sin, but just sin in general. And God hates that. Now God will use sin. Or suffering. Sorry about that. God will use suffering for His glory. He'll use it in your life to make something good out of it. But God never planned suffering. It's like He never planned death. That's the result of our action. And so we understand that God hates our suffering just as much as we hate our suffering. He's just going to use it. He's going to use it in your life to bring about His will. So, in our sufferings, we take comfort in the knowledge that we have all these sufferings in common with Christ, and He regards our suffering as His. God considers our suffering, whatever you suffer, as His. So not only does God, oh, I'm ahead of myself, aren't I? Sorry about that. Okay. Tell me if I forget. I can talk about it. God understand our suffering, but in Christ, He blesses it. He actually blesses it and makes it holy. God says, I'm going to take your suffering and I'm going to use it for something. I'm going to make it holy. Again, from Luther, we know that it's God's good pleasure that we should suffer and that God's glory is manifest in our sufferings. For through the sufferings of Christ, the sufferings of all His saints, that's us, has become utterly holy. For it has been touched with Christ's suffering. Therefore, we accept all suffering as a holy thing, for it is true holiness. What God is saying here is, is that God blesses the situation, even the rotten stuff in our life, God wants to use for you. He wants to use to build your life, to draw you closer to Him, to reflect Jesus in you, and to help you grow closer to Him. He wants to use as a witness to Him. But everything you go through, understand, you never go through it alone. Just as faith, the name, the word, and the work of Christ are by mine 
by reason of my belief in him, so is suffering power too. And I suffer for his sake. Thus Christ's sufferings are fulfilled in the Christian every day. Every day that we suffer, God is working. And he's going to use it. Now the reality also is that God will never leave us there. That's his promise. Our suffer we did come to the fact that sufferings are never permanent. I love the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter is a book about suffering. It really is. And he begins by talking about that. He says in the first chapter, You rejoice in this, even though now for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief and various trials. And then he talks about that in the next three chapters, four chapters. And then in the end, toward the end, in the fifth chapter, the last chapter, he says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. The reality is, God says, when you go through a problem, whatever it is, sickness, struggles, whatever it may be, God's not going to be. That's God's promise. It's not going to be. Now maybe that's taking you home. You get job. But the reality is, God will not leave you in a situation. He will restore you. He will make you strong. He will bring you serve and steadfast. And that's where you find a comfort. Because I'm not going to deal with everything in life. God promises he will. And I can find comfort in that. So what's it mean? What does it mean when we look to our suffering, whether it be the coronavirus, or whether it be constant pain we live in, or whether it be suffering inflicted on us by others who hurt us? The truth is, it means that no matter what the situation, no matter what's going on in your life right now, we know that God is the God of all comfort. And your pain that you go through is never meaningless. Never. It's never empty. But rather, it is a time that God is going to use to draw you close to Him. To bring into your life the reflection of Jesus Christ. And the more that we trust in His hand to do that, the more we know that His plan and His goal for you in your life, wherever you're at, is to bring you to a that's God. That's what He wants in your life. He'll do anything for you to bring you that you spend eternity with Him. And when we understand that, then truly God becomes the God of all comfort. Amen. Now may God's peace, grace, and strength be with each and every one of you. Amen. We now collect the offering. Okay?